us were raised to learn from our mistakes. So I hope that in this process, the management team as well as the board of trustees are looking back and saying, okay, it's been almost a four year process of trying to fulfill this position and we've hit hurdles here and there. Is there something that we can do better either as a management team or a board of trustees? Because you guys are bound even, you know, whoever becomes the next president of Lakeland, like you said, you have 24 different people with 23 different, 24 different minds they're all not going to agree. How is it that the Board of Trustees are going to function from now on when having a difference in philosophy with someone? You know, how can they, we can't always, you know, just say, okay, we have this president, we got rid of him because the Board of Trustees didn't fit with his philosophy. We can't do that every, you know, every yeah, time. Exactly. So where's that review process and how do we? Yeah. Oh, I can assure you there's a lot of soul searching going on. But I should also tell you, this is a highly unusual event for this Board of Trustees. This Board of Trustees has been incredibly collegial and cooperative and on the same page with the group for a number of years, which raises its own questions. You know, that raises the questions of have we been aggressive enough? Have we been, you know, risk-taking enough? So, you know, this is this is sparking a lot of thought about it. And if there's any worry that we're not learning from these mistakes, you know, you should know that there's a lot of discussion about what happened, what are we going to do differently? And using that word aggressive, I wanted to say about it, I know if I should go there. I feel like our board, um, I feel like everything, how quick it happened, something, someone was aggressive on one of the sides. Because otherwise that shouldn't have happened. I feel like we should have been able to work through those differences and those problems, at least to the end of the school year, anything. I just feel like someone was too aggressive and if that was the case, how can we assess that and say we need to stop this? You, you know what I mean? To yeah. make someone feel like I'm going to write a letter resigning from a position, you must get a hint from someone, you know, being aggressive and saying sure. certain things. I think what you need to know is that, as sudden as it may appear to us, there were a long series of ongoing communications between Dr. Grendel and the board, as there should have been during this whole process. From when he started, they've been in constant contact. It was a, the best I can tell you, it was an evolving situation. It seemed sudden to a lot of us, but I don't, it was... But relationships are complicated, all right? And they change. And barring any one specific hard instance that breaks a relationship, there's a lot of factors that go into it. And that's what I understand in this situation. A lot of time, a lot of conversations, a lot of talks leading up to this point of last week. So it seems very sudden to us, but I don't think it was quite as sudden as it may have appeared. Where do you guys as a management team fit in with that um Kind of those conversations. I mean, like you know, Nate and, we're not, and everyone. Yeah, we're not on the board. Uh huh. Um, 
so very much on the outs. We're like a lot of other people. Um, when a board acts and a board thinks, they have their deliberations behind closed doors because that's the way it works and they speak as one board and they're done. So we have not been privy to those conversations. Do we all have our own thoughts and opinions and people that say what was going on and stuff? Sure. Do we know how accurate those are? No. So that's why we're being very careful because there's a lot of stuff flying around. Nothing I've heard has been accurate, I'll tell you that much. And the only thing, yeah, only thing, thing is, thing is just say, along the way though, mm -hmm. we, we are the ones who have the committee meetings with the board prior okay. to their broad okay. meetings. Yeah, Each one of us has a particular area of responsibility, as obviously you expect. So Nate and I meet with the board three times a year to talk about academic and student affairs. Um, in his previous role, Dan would meet with them to talk about human resources issues and other kind of finances and physical plan. So every vice president has a direct re engagement opportunity with the board on a regular basis to review their areas of oversight. And so that happens regularly, which allows us the chance to get to know them as people, to meet with them, have lunch with them outside of a kind of business context, and feel like we are all talking regularly about the future of the institution. So those relationships happen throughout, um, but sometimes the board moves into what we call executive committee, where they meet as a board without us employees present. Um, and again, the board are volunteers. They're do spending a lot of time and their own human resources, their money on the institution to make it a great place. Sometimes they step away from the employees to make decisions that might not be affected um, that, that they need to make without specific employees present. And just the last That's part typical. of the question is how many um, staff or faculty members sit, who are current who sit on the board of trustees? The board of trustees it is, is in any organization is rarely comprised of employees. We have two elected faculty representatives who attend the large board meetings on, on uh, the three time a year. Um, we also have the student representatives. We also have an alumni representative. Um, so they participate in those three time a year board meetings. So we have no staff or faculty that when it comes down to taking a vote, that has a vote that counts. That's a kind of separation of powers thing. You know, and you see it in all kinds of government. That's not um, unusual. That's that's not unusual. Um, and so the, we provide the input, the on the ground information, and they use the information they gather as well as ours to make the decisions that they believe are in the best interest of the college. But in ordinary events, we are very actively participating with the board um, and constant contact with them. I have to go way back to there because we've been there. That's absolutely correct, and yes, there will be a replacement for my current position. And we also love all of those things, those types of events. And you're going to have to give me a little time to transition into that as I find somebody, we find somebody to take over my role. But those things are great, and they are fun, and they need, they, they should continue because they are. 